I V M. I'm Zarina Poonawala, host of the Empowering Series podcast on the IVM Network. I am your peak performance coach and leadership coach, and I'm here to share with you productivity tools, life-altering techniques, and real-life hacks to help you achieve your maximum potential in everything you do, in your relationships, professions, and most importantly, your life. So let's thrive, grow, and evolve together. one episode at a time how do you feel about money ever heard someone saying money is the root cause of all evils of all troubles this relationship would have never suffered if we had enough money or i am just a money making machine if i don't go to work how will i make money how will i bring food to the table You know you should listen to this song by ABBA. I'm not sure if the millennials are aware, but ABBA's song Money 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 is literally literally how we all feel about money. There is so much negativity around the word, around the concept. We feel embarrassed to receive money and we feel kind of authoritative when giving money. Money has often been associated with power of position greed gluttony supremacy anything to do with superiority you have more money then you deserve more respect you know you have more money then you're feared more if you have more money you're loved more and if you have less of any of these then that's exactly how you're going to be treated right that's how we think about money you love money coming in but you hate you hate it when money is going out so it's kind of toxic like that as well the whole relationship is kind of toxic isn't it why do we think like this why do we feel this way about money it's because the way we've been taught and perceived money through the eyes of our elders and people around us is quite detrimental actually and it's not recent it's kind of embedded into us since our childhood so it's almost a damaging perception that we have regarding money For instance, if your parents couldn't afford to send you to that school trip or buy you a new laptop or a new phone, you would think of it as, "Hey, I have lesser money than my friends, and so I can't afford it," right? Or your parents would say, "We don't have the money right now, so we can't afford it." So you're thinking of money as something that didn't allow you to be part of a group. If you saw some kind of a family dispute over inheritance and property, you would realize that, "Oh my god, you know, because of this money, the relationships are all sour and nobody loves each other it's all about the money or then you're being bullied because you don't fit in because you materialistically don't fit into a group so you realize that you don't fit in why because you don't have the money to fit in you don't have the money to buy things that other people are buying now you see how money has been used to create fear in everything we do let me explain this there is money iq and money eq Both these are involved in transactions related to money. So IQ is your financial knowledge, your investment strategies and your professional expertise. But EQ is the emotions, your emotions surrounding the concept of money, the feeling. That's why my first question to you was how do you feel about money? Obviously, with your fast-paced pragmatic lives, you're going to be like Zarina, it doesn't matter. money is beyond all this and it's about making more to be happy and to be successful because the more we can buy our happiness the more successful we are going to feel and we're going to feel like we're rich and you know we're doing well for ourselves so please for god's sake zarina don't tell me how i am supposed to think about money and feel about money it really doesn't matter to me right it is what it is except that it's not you can actually change your attitude towards money and it can absolutely create a paradigm shift in your lives i know you don't want to believe me but you should all you need to do is learn to appreciate your money and respect it for instance when we think of bills what comes to mind the first thought is usually oh gosh i have to pay my electricity bill once again there it is on my head 
Instead, you should be appreciating the fact that you are paying to receive light to create brightness in your home or office. But what are you thinking? You're thinking, oh my God, money is going out. I have to pay my bills, right? You're not thinking what you're getting out of what you're paying. You're not thinking what is being received. Every month or every fortnight, you're going out buying groceries. And obviously you have to, right? And you're starting to think, oh my gosh, the beginning of the month and here I am spending it all away. Nothing's left. Instead, you say I'm paying to eat well. I'm paying to receive something that is making my life more comfortable. I'm so grateful for this. Now you see what's happening here. I'm not looking at money as an unhealthy commodity. Instead, I'm thinking of it as an experience that allows me to fulfill my needs and my wants. Let me tell you where this ideology actually comes from. It comes from Ken Honda. Ken Honda is Japan's best-selling Zen millionaire and his book, Happy Money, has sold over billions of copies worldwide. Now, his mentor is Wahi Takeda. Wahi Takeda is also famously known as the Warren Buffett of Japan. That means he's a rich guy, right? Now, Ken Honda one day asked Wahi Takeda while he was doing this research on money and things like that. He asked, what is the secret of your wealth? So, Mr. Takeda here, he turns around, looks at Ken and he says, I'll teach you a very simple technique. He says, just arigato your money. Now, Ken is a little confused and perplexed at this point and he asks, what do you mean by arigato my money? Arigato in Japanese, by the way, means thank you. So, Mr. Takeda, he says, appreciate your money. When you spend, appreciate it, respect it, feel happy about spending. All right. When you receive, feel the same way. Now, this is not some monk sitting in the hills taking you on a spiritual journey about money. Okay. These are guys who know money. One is the Warren Buffett of Japan, while the one who's writing about it is known as the Zen millionaire of Japan. So, Although the teaching is very Zen here, there is enough proof of concept for you. So no matter how pragmatic your life is and no matter how much you think it is what it is, this is what it is. You need to learn to love your money. You need to learn to love it the right way. You don't need to fear it, right? So if you want to make happy money for yourself, if you want to grow financially independent and create wealth for yourself, try this amazing life-changing technique coined by Ken Honda. The technique by itself is called the Arigato Money Technique. So like I mentioned, it simply means thank you in Japanese, right? It means to appreciate and respect the money while spending and receiving. Here's what you're going to do and how you're going to use this technique. When you're buying groceries, paying bills, buying yourself a cup of coffee or giving money to anybody, you will say Arigato out. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the money, respect the money, give it a moment of your time and bless the money that you are spending. And when you get your salary or a contract payment or a money voucher, don't be embarrassed to receive the money. Sometimes we do get embarrassed, you know, we feel like, oh yeah, money is coming in. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And you just put it away. It's a hush situation. I don't know why, but a lot of people feel embarrassed to receive money. Instead, feel proud, feel happy, appreciate it. When receiving money, say arigato in. Thank you. Thank the money. Appreciate the money. Respect what is coming in. And imagine it creating a lot of abundance for you. Appreciate what you have received. This is exactly how you're going to use this technique. So every time you're making an expense, every time you're making an income, all you have to do is arigato in and arigato out. That's it. But you need to do it with a clean mind with a good intention, with consciousness. Now, I hope you give this technique a try. And if you do, please share your thoughts with me on my social media handles. Until then, arigato for tuning in. Be safe, be well, be empowered. If you liked this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. 
I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Would like to thank the sponsors on the network this week, Cred, Siet, and Global Victoria. Thank you so much for making this possible. On Cyrus Says, Cyrus is joined by the hilarious and extremely charming illusionist and therapist, Suhani Shah. They talk about different aspects of magic like sleight of hand, mind reading, mentalism, and more. The Habit Coach completed 500 episodes, 500, and Ashton has a special message for us on the occasion. Do check that out. We had Lekhini Desai, founder of the India Ethnic Company, talk to Varun Digirala about their story and the Hutke marketing idea that made them popular. On Nankari, South of Anarchist celebrated World Chocolate Day. They took us through the origins, history, economics of chocolate, and shared their memories. On Tere Mere Raste, Keshu Chaturvedi shares an interesting story from Leh. Check out an updated version of The Traveling Professor's Diary. It's now rechristened as Smarter with Sid. Same old brain fill with new stories and insights. This time, listen in to know why you should keep things simple. And finally, check out Global Victoria Tech Talks. This one is in partnership with Global Victoria, the trade arm of the government of Victoria and Australia. The edtech and gaming industries are booming in Victoria, Australia, and this series is meant to showcase that. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one, or simply a sports enthusiast, join us, Tanvi and Shlok. We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday. Only on the IBM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's gonna be lit.